you're not welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking about the really crazy power outage that we had back in april i live in northeast wisconsin and in april we had one of the worst power outages in wisconsin state history if not the worst power outage in wisconsin state wisconsin state history my area was the most heavily affected because our power lines had not been serviced in like 60 years or something crazy a lot of the wooden poles that hold up the power lines basically just snapped in half to the pressure of the snow it was really thick really wet really heavy and that's why our power was out for so long because i think the power company ended up saying that like 80 or 83 like it was some insane number percent percentage of poles had to be completely replaced and for our home to get power it took eight days i think because we've been talking about this so much recently here on my channel since then just because that experience has changed how we i don't want to say that we're preppers but how we prepare how we can things how we sir how we decide to preserve our garden harvest and things like that and today i want to talk about our 10 most used items during those eight days i think now being a time where natural disasters are seeming to be more prevalent in all shapes and forms and i think that having a video like this would be really great to maybe just help for your own family to be prepared. I talked about back then how so many people in our area got caught with their pants down, my family included. I'm not saying that we were totally prepared for this because you're gonna see we were not. Um, and it's, once you live through that once and you have, you know, I have four little kids at home and I wanna make sure that we're completely prepared so that if something like this were ever to happen again or something similar, we would be more prepared and sitting in a better position than we were last time. Not saying that we would be completely perfect and totally carefree, but we're gonna be talking about basically those top 10 most used items that saved us that I think are super important during those eight days with no power. I wanna start by talking about the things that you that will not work in your home when the power is out. Let's just start there. So power goes out. Obviously you're thinking your lights, obviously your outlets aren't gonna work, things like that. But other things that you might not think of, your well, we are on a well here, we do live in the country, your sink is only gonna hold as much pressure as there is in the line when the power goes out. So you may start your water when the power goes out and go, oh, okay, the water is flowing, we're gonna have water. That's not the case. So the second the power went, what ended up happening is our power went out at like three o'clock, four o'clock on a Wednesday night or something like that, a Tuesday or Wednesday night. Our area, it's not that uncommon to lose power for a couple hours or even overnight. So we all went to bed. We're thinking, okay, the power's gonna be back on the next morning, no issues. Well. That did not happen. The next morning, our power was still out. We thought, okay, a couple more hours, it's gonna be back on, no worries. I came to the kitchen sink. I immediately filled up pitchers of water and everything like that because back then we did not keep bottled water or water at all in the house. So there was that. Used up pretty much most of what was in the faucet uh, with the pressure in the line to get the rest of the water out. Very quickly, you're gonna realize your toilets do not flush. Uh, showers are no longer a thing. Baths are no longer a thing. Hot water is no longer a thing. Um, our house runs on propane. Our stove is propane. Our heat is propane. None of that works without power. So a lot of basic things, just things that you expect to have in a modern society, just do not work. So let's just start there. Once we realized the power company had put out a statement saying that best case scenario, it was gonna be another three days without power, that's when everybody including us ran into town ran to the store and started picking up things basically we were planning for another three days at least um they were saying three to six three to seven just depending on your area we knew that our area was probably gonna be closer to six or seven so we went ahead and got some things my husband ran to town and got a couple things of bottled water that was our first most used item was bottled water after that experience, we now keep bottled water on our shelf. 
it was something that I almost prided myself on that like we don't buy plastic water bottles or we don't buy water bottles at all because we have refillable water bottles that we use and that's great to a sense but in an emergency situation like we were in we were caught with our pants down and it was one of those things where it's like okay pride and all that needs to go out the window this is an item we need to store it needs to be on the shelf we are a large family we have animals all the things we need to store water on the shelf and it's irresponsible that we hadn't so that's something that we got right away and we now stop my husband went into town that day another thing he was looking for was generators but as you can imagine those sold out like that our stores were hauling in generators from all over you have to imagine trees are down in the roads power lines are down the roads they could not get up to where we were they just there weren't getting trucks in so my husband ended up driving like two hours south in really crappy conditions to get a generator from another store that he basically called asked if they had any they put it on hold for him which was so unbelievably wonderful but he knew it was gonna be another couple hours before he went down there got the generator got it back home and got it hooked up to get heat back in the house but at this point there hadn't been heat in the house for over 24 hours it was very cold we're snowed in it was freezing and he picked up some propane heaters so i have a couple options here i did pull out a couple things so this is a sunrite propane heater this is something that attaches right to your propane tank like a propane tank that you would hook up to a gas grill this just screws in right here you turn it on high medium low and it puts off heat this worked fantastic we put this up on the kitchen island pointed it towards the living room our home is all open through here it's pretty it can be hard to heat just because it is so open it's a big how many times can i say open big open space this heated the main area of our house really really wonderfully the other thing we have is a buddy heater this is something that we keep my husband uses this in the hunting shack so it's something that we already had he just had to get it out of the hunting shack these buddy heaters run on these small green propane tanks which we always keep these in stock now as well um, this is something usually that we would only keep during hunting season to run the buddy heater to keep the shack or the ice shack warm or something like that if we were ice fishing now it's something we keep more uh, in stock for those types of situations so if you are living in a really cold climate like us in the midwest and you're prepping for a long-term power outage space heaters are needed this was april it was the last big snowstorm of the year and it was freezing the only thing ironically that was keeping the house somewhat warm was the fact that the snow had been so high that it was covering the windows and it was actually acting as like a snow blanket keeping the insulating the house at least a hair but it was very very cold other thing that my husband picked up right away was a camp stove you're going to need something to cook warm meals on in a situation like that i cannot tell you how much of a morale boost and how much better it makes you feel to put hot food in you because for the first day or day and a half until we got the camp stove we were only eating out of what was in our fridge and remind you the fridge isn't working so it's very stressful to think okay how long can we keep the cold in uh in a situation like this so you're keeping the fridge closed as long as you can your freezers closed as long as you can we are basically eating off of our convenience items snacks crackers um any boxed items that were on the shelf dry goods and sandwiches was pretty much what we were living off of for the first day and a half until we got the camp stove the camp stove also runs off of our small green propane tanks here but something to cook food on we now have a couple different options i also got for my birthday a standing camp stove with two burners on it also runs on a propane tank i use that to can nowadays but now knowing we have options to get warm food even if that means you have a propane grill or a blackstone or something like that to cook warm meals on that can be good enough just something for hot meals because it makes a world of difference to have some sense of normalcy when everything around you feels like it's falling apart to go along with our camp stove and things like that my cast iron pans were basically the only thing i used the entire time 
during the power outage because they're easy to clean if you season them and you care for them properly they're so easy to clean especially when water is limited to be able to just wipe it out with a washcloth or a paper towel or something like that was game changing it took a lot of stress off of me and i could just put it in the camp stove and close the top i didn't have to worry about anything melting falling apart anything like that doing any damage to pans and if you really came into a pickle which trust me we were in the beginning because remember we had absolutely nothing i could have started a fire in the fire pit outside and took my cast iron pans out to the fire pit and cooked a warm meal there which trust me we almost did that first day we almost did that first day because you just want something warm and you're freezing and a warm meal just is like the only thing you're craving the next thing we the thing that made all of this so much easier was our generator finally on day two going into day the morning of day three we got the generator hooked up so we woke up the morning of day three and we had the generator it was warm in the house we had limited lights because your generator depending on the size of the generator you get can run uh, a certain amount of square footage certain amount of outlets certain amount of rooms however you want to however you would like to word that so we had the heat running we basically had power going to the furnace to lights in the kitchen and we had our living room hooked up and one bathroom that way we could still flush a toilet we had one working bathroom to brush teeth and do all of those things our living room was fully functional so we could charge devices and phones and uh, the kids could watch TV it was just day three was our first day of somewhat normal that generator was a huge game changer for us we now have two generators because after the power outage a lot of people were trying to return these generators and basically all the big box stores said no way we had to order all of these extra things we're not going to have a whole warehouse full of generators that are used um we're not going to accept returns on these so then people were selling them on facebook marketplace for like next to nothing and we bought a second generator for 500 dollars after that this way if we ever have problems with the first generator we have a backup this way if we ever need to run heat to the chicken coop we can get the chicken coop hooked up with uh, the second generator or we can run a second generator to the garage or to the shop or anything like that if it ever came to be an issue where we needed more things running because a lot of people were wondering what about your food your freezers a lot of people around us lost everything all of their food everything in their deep freezers some of my older kids were coming home from school telling me that their friends family lost everything in their freezers everything in all their food was completely destroyed in the power outage luckily for us it wasn't as bad of an issue we have three chest freezers two are in the basement they were completely fine chest freezers hold cold a lot better than an upright freezer does so we never opened them never once and it's a lot colder in our basement than it is in our main house and they were completely fine for those couple those first couple days before we got the generator on them our third chest freezer is out in the garage it was cold enough that entire time where we did not have the generator hooked up to the freezer out in the garage um, it was snowing it was freezing we didn't have to worry about that um, we also things that were on top of my chest freezers in the basement if I, I know I said we didn't open them, but we did open them to check how things were holding up. And I do remember that some things were slightly thawed on the top layer of those chest freezers. I do remember pulling them out and taking some of that first layer and putting it out in the garage in um, that freezer just to kind of take that first level of stuff off and get it outside. Other than that, everything was fine. The only thing that we ended up losing was a thing of sour cream in the fridge. And I think it's just because the fridge got a hair too warm for the sour cream, but everything else was completely fine. So generators are super expensive, super expensive. But let me tell you this from somebody who has lived it, a generator is a lot less expensive when you can plan for it, you can save for it. And it's a cost that you're saying, I know this is an investment, but it is an investment for my family and I'm going to hope and pray that I never have to use this generator for anything versus 
everybody that was in that situation here where your power went out, it was gonna be out for days, it took time to get a generator, time to track down a generator, and it's a lot more expensive when you're not planning for it. I can promise you that it was an investment. And when everybody needs them and demand goes up, so does the price. We paid a pretty penny for that generator. And like I said, totally needed, made a world of difference for us. We were able to help neighbors who didn't have generators at the time, couldn't get water. They were coming over here, charging phones, charging tablets, computers, whatever they needed, taking a warm shower, <laughs> getting water. We basically opened our house to any of our neighbors who needed anything. That's what small town neighbors do. You have to do it. You just have to, it's not even an option. So if anyone needed something and we had it, we were gonna make it work. So there's that. Something that was completely I knew that we were planning for and kind of had in the back of our minds was something I didn't realize was gonna be as important as it was, was our storage shelf. On the storage shelf, we have MREs. My husband's ex-military, my brother-in-law is still currently enlisted, my brother is enlisted. I guess we are just an army family through and through. And we get a lot of old MREs. When you are done with a training cycle or a training op, Basically, you have all these extra MREs, and if you don't know what an MRE is, it I should have brought one up for the basement, but they're basically meals ready to eat. They are kind of like freeze-dried, pre-packaged foods, and it comes with a warmer in the MRE itself. Basically, it's kind of like a little hand warmer, and you shake it up, and you plop it in your food, and it warms it up in the bag, and then you eat it. We did eat those that first day, that first day and a half. We broke those out. Those were a game changer. To have something warm that you didn't have to cook, you didn't need power or heat for, it wasn't the most delicious thing I've ever had, absolutely not. And I can tell you, after my husband had spent years eating MREs, he was not very enthused that they came up from the basement and uh, I said, bon appetit, pick your favorite. Uh, but they were so nice to have, <laughs> they're very nice to have. So we have a couple boxes of MREs down there, but we were also eating, like I mentioned earlier, all of our like animal crackers, Ritz crackers, Cheez-Its, anything that I could just pull out of a box and dump into a bowl for the kids for those first couple of days before we had the generator. That was a game changer, just having something that you could just dump and hand out. Convenience meals, convenience items, even things like canned ravioli, canned soups, things that you could just dump out and dump into a pot and set on your grill to heat up was a game changer and that's stuff that we don't normally buy but i can tell you when you are worried about do my kids have enough clean clothes to get us through this week do we have enough water to get through the week are my kids going to be warm when they go to bed tonight am i going to be warm when i go to bed tonight okay now i have to get the generator and i have to go downstairs and i have to flip off the living room so that I can turn on the water heater so the water heater can get warm so I can have enough water in there so everyone can have a warm shower. You do not care about preservatives and that you're dumping a meal out of a can that maybe normally your standards are a lot higher. You just don't care. You just don't. And you're just thinking, you know what? Tonight my kids are warm. I am warm. They had warm food in their bellies and they're going to bed in a warm bed with clean sheets, today is a win. And that is what you have to really just, everything else goes out the window and those canned things become your best friend. They really do because you don't have the mental wherewithal to worry about, okay, I have to throw a meal together. What can I grab off my pantry shelf? I don't wanna cook an elaborate meal. I want something simple, delicious, and is gonna just meet the checklist for today that everybody was fed. Our meals were very simple during that time. I will link a video down below during that week. I did film um, a week of cooking with no power. What we used, you're gonna see all of our items, the meals that we ate, things like that. So I'll link that down below if you wanna see more in depth. Another thing that became our best friend during those first two or three days before the generator were these hot hand hand warmers. My husband is a blue collar worker. We buy a big box of these every year from him, for him from either Sam's Club, Tractor Supply. I think Sam's Club is where um, you get the biggest box for the least amount of money. But 
these stay hot for 10 hours. Before we had the generator hooked up, my husband was gone. He was going to go get all those things. I was home alone with the kids. I pulled our big box out. I broke these open, cracked them up. We were all wrapped up in blankets in the living room, just huddling together, trying to stay warm. I gave everybody some of these. Some of my kids cracked these open and put them down by their feet in their socks. Some of my kids put these in their pockets, put them just inside your blanket and it traps all the heat from these. When we had nothing else, these were so nice just to have something warm. And I was shocked at how well these worked, just having one or two of these sitting in your lap, wrapped in a blanket. It did keep your, it kept you warm. It kept you warm enough where you weren't shivering and freezing. I mean, guys, we were bundled up in snow pants and jackets and hats and mittens, wrapped in blankets. I, it had to have been like maybe 40, 30 degrees in here. It was very, very cold. So. When we had nothing else, these were super nice. Another thing that kind of surprised me, but now looking back at it, it seems obvious, was to have paper plates and plastic utensils. I keep, I don't keep that stuff like stocked normally, but I lucked out and I have a tote downstairs that's labeled like party supplies. And every time the kids have a birthday or I host a holiday, if I have anything left over, whether it be balloons, uh, paper plates, napkins, plastic utensils. I put them downstairs in that tote and I just kind of forget about them. Well, when the power went out, I went, you know what? I bet I have some paper plates downstairs. That way I don't have to worry about washing my dishes when water is limited. That was a game changer. We ate off of those all week. We were able to just eat, throw our stuff away. I didn't have to worry about washing dishes. Like I said, when you are worried about literally every other basic thing, washing dishes you do not care you don't care you don't want to do it you have no mental energy left to worry about that stuff so having paper plates and utensils was so amazing i now try to keep those things stocked and downstairs and just tucked away because in an emergency they are they were honestly game changing because they just took one thing off of the mental load and sometimes that's all you need to be like Okay, this is one less thing I have to worry about. We're doing okay. Very last one is either some, some sort of power bank. You need one. When the power went out, we were not at home. We were a couple miles down the road at my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law's house, and the kids, they have an indoor hot tub swim spot, and the kids wanted to swim. So we brought the kids over, they were swimming. We saw the storm starting to hit, and didn't really think a whole lot of it. It's Wisconsin, it snows here. Uh, by the time we went, or right before we were ready to leave, the power went out, even at their house. So we thought, well, if there's no power here, there's definitely no power at home. It was about maybe five o'clock, six o'clock. We thought, you know what? We might as well just hang out here for a little bit. The kids are happy here. Let's just wait a couple more hours and we'll go home before bedtime, put the kids in bed, wrap them up in blankets really nice and we'll wake up tomorrow morning and there will be power. Well, we already talked about it, there was not power. By this time, Joe's phone was dead, my phone was dead. We had no way to know that the power company had made an announcement saying, uh-uh, start planning because this is not a short-term thing. We were just kind of sitting and waiting for the power to come back on. Thankfully, my brother-in-law was trying to get a hold of us and realized that if he was calling Joe and it was going right to voicemail and he was calling me, it was going right to voicemail, our phones were probably dead and he needed to come save us. So he ventured out and came to our house and was like, uh, you guys obviously didn't hear, you need to get up and we need to start planning. So immediately it got to, okay, whose house can fit, you know, 12 kids? Whose house can fit, you know, 20 people? Where can we fit, uh, you know, our brother-in-law has animals too. Are we going to load up our chickens and our dogs and get over to his house? Is he gonna take his stuff and come up here with his kids and his family? What is the plan? Because immediately our brain is like, okay, what household is most prepared? Who are we moving? Because if this is gonna be an eight day thing, we're all coming together, we're all gonna be in one spot. Well, they went up to town to get the stuff. By the time they got back to my brother-in-law's house, his house had power. Um, by that time, we had already had the generator. He had already helped uh, my husband hook it up to the house. So we decided, you know what, we have the generator. We're just going to tough it out here and we will be fine. 
So you need some sort of power bank because to get important messages like, hey, don't sit in a blanket and think that in a couple hours your power is gonna come back on because it's not. If we wouldn't have got that pop, that message from my brother-in-law, we wouldn't have gotten a generator when we did. It would have been a lot more t days of suffering, waiting for another load of generators to come in. I can tell you, um, I have a family member, my dad, he also went eight days without power and he tucked it out and did not get a generator. He just sucked it up and lived through it with no generator. And I suppose as uh, an adult, you can make that decision to do that for yourself and suffer through it and tough it out. Good for him, I would not have done it. But if we would not have gotten that message, it would have been a lot worse. We would have been a lot worse off. We could have very easily fallen into that camp of people who lost everything in their freezers, who had a lot bigger fallout from this power outage than what we did. So I would say get some power banks to keep your phones charged. You can, can communicate back and forth. That was another thing. The power lines were down in our area. So uh, even if we could get phone calls, like our phones had power left, we couldn't make phone calls coming in or out. My husband and I learned that very quickly. So the other thing I would say, kind of an honorable mention, get a battery powered radio just so that you can keep up with the world. Some sort of power bank, some sort of battery powered radio, whether that be just like a Milwaukee radio that runs on batteries that hopefully you have charged and kind of ready and wait, whether that be a radio that literally runs on like double A batteries or D batteries or something like that to be able to keep up with messages and different things and be able to keep up with all of that stuff. I was pretty shocked when I got an email from the school saying that like, nope, we know the power's out and it's been out, but we expect our kids at school I, I, if I wouldn't have had my phone charged, I would have had no idea that the school was expecting my kids to be there. And if they weren't there, they would be marked as truant, which we can get into that another day. But I would not have known. So some sort of power bank, a radio to get those messages to and from, or I guess just to, because you're not sending out messages, but you can at least be up to date on things like that. And also just mentally having a radio so you can hear what's going on in the outside world helps a lot i think that's something that maybe not a lot of people think of is just mentally you feel so disconnected from everything else and it's kind of like am i the only one going through this having that reassert reassurance hearing it on the radio other people being like hey these are the updates it's what the power company saying um if this is your area it's gonna be a couple more hours or you're expected to get power back today just hang in there a lot of things like that, different tips and tricks were coming out on the radio on how to get hot meals, where to go for sanctuary if you needed it, safe haven houses. A lot of, pretty much every other school in our area except our school district shut down schools and opened them as safe havens for families. You could go in there and get hot meals, hot showers, you could charge your devices, bring home water, whatever you needed. So there is that, those are my 10 items that really helped us get through that eight days with no power. Things that I would say are the most important and I would try to start looking into some of these items. Now, like I said, depending on where you live in the country, your natural disasters are gonna be a lot different than what mine are here in Wisconsin. And the items that you might need might be a little different than what is important up here. That being said, Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today talking about preparedness with a little bit of real life experience like i said i will have that one week of cooking with no power video linked down below 